Hey guys, Sarah Ansberry here, and I've got more subscriber questions that I'm answering, and I'm really liking this, I'm not going to lie. I uh, love the way you guys are phrasing the questions, and uh, I love how many people have the same types of questions. So uh, this one was something I pulled out, and I was like, I want to do this right away, and the question is, what do you do about tethering? Hey, how do you practice tethering with your partner? Uh, sometimes uh, this person was saying they get up to the line, and they end up you know, getting that little out of control, and here's your answer, don't bother tethering, okay? That concept gets us in so much trouble. It doesn't have anything to do with how you hit a ball, where you hit a ball. So actually, when players worry about being tethered together, okay, uh, they're so worried about this, they're not really paying attention to the ball, and it also changes your ability to control the ball. Okay. Um, one of the big reasons why tethering gets us in trouble too is because what happens is people move laterally side to side. Um, lateral shuffling and deceleration um, is really what puts a lot of damage on our body, especially as you get older. Uh, your ankles, your hips, your knees, all of that, um, that motion that you're worried about right there, uh, it, it just hurts us. And uh, when people start to do this a lot, they start to compress and it makes it very heavy, puts a lot of strain on your back. So let's let's start with uh, approaching the net, okay? So I've got this little circle here. This is actually my stopping point. So if, if my partner is hitting the third shot drop, okay? Uh, what I am now going to start to do is start to separate from my partner and create a stagger. Okay, why this is important is because now what my partner is doing is they're trying to create an opportunity. What I'm doing is I'm putting pressure, but I'm creating some distance between us. So let's say my partner hits an amazing third shot and now that ball becomes a floater. Now from this point, I can now have room to accelerate and poach that position. Now, what happens a lot is players are worried about tethering together, and then the ball comes up, and now we run into each other, and we get caught. So actually, staggering is extremely important to covering your space. So let's say my partner is back there. Okay, what she really needs to do is put that ball in front of me so we have no middle issues. Okay, now if she puts that ball over there, over there, that is going to open up the middle uh, but basically what we're looking at is when I kind of pause here, I can now go this direction or I can go this direction. I'm not concerned on moving with my partner. I'm more concerned where my partner puts the ball. Okay, so now let's get up to that non-volley line. One of the most strenuous things people do is they're so worried about moving side to side, just that little motion that hurt my knee a little bit, okay? Uh, that lateral motion is why we get caught at our feet and why we get caught on the outside of the court. We are so busy moving. The biggest thing that happens on that tether is now the paddle is like down here. Okay, so if I'm moving over here, look at this position. What's open? This massive space over here that now I have to go down and chase. So when you really watch us at higher levels, you see that we don't actually tether. Um, what we do is we look at holding our positions. And what I need to do is when my partner's got the ball, I need to register where she's hitting it because that's where I need to prepare from. If the ball is in that corner, I am now prepped in this direction. So if I'm tethering like this, my body is facing the wrong direction. This is where we get caught in the chicken wing. Okay. So as we're in our positions, if I'm correctly moving, it's a step any way I want to go. It's not a shuffle. So we get super stressed about tethering and moving laterally. That lateral motion, I can't tell you, it's just so difficult on our bodies. And I'll tell you, if I'm shuffle, shuffle, tethering, tethering, and moving with every ball, that is even more difficult to be able to control that ball. Okay, One thing we have to remember about pickleball, it's a plastic ball with holes in it. So all of that energy, when we're like, shuffling and scrambling and trying to move together all that goes into the ball okay and then i have those people ask me why do i keep popping up the ball there's your answer way too many moving parts okay what we want to do is stabilize the body so we can see what's going on move to the ball when we want or need to move to the ball okay it's going to be a whole lot easier in your body you're going to see a lot more of what's going on around you and you're going to be a whole lot less stressed out